Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. Today I wanted to try some new makeup in my collection and go for a little bit of a late summer into fall look. And I wanted to talk about Lisa Laflamme, the Canadian television anchor who's been in the news all week. There's a lot going on with that. There's been a lot of articles about it and activity on Twitter. And I've been paying close attention to all of it and I felt like it was something I wanted to talk about here on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. On this channel, we talk about self-acceptance, authentic personal style, and sometimes the expansion of consciousness. If that sounds good, I do hope that you will subscribe and stay, join the community, definitely check in in the comments. Starting off right now on my skin, I already have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I use the color Diaz 7. Everything else is here in front of me. Most of it is brand new to my collection. I'm gonna start with my brows. I am trying out two products from Kosas. This is a pencil that they offer. It's called Brow Pop. I have it in the shade Medium Brown. And I think that's pretty good. It's a little warm for me, but it's awfully close. Okay, so I am not from Canada, and Lisa Laflamme, for me, is not a household name. The first time I really heard about her was this last week, um, I guess the last two weeks when the news sort of popped off about her being kind of unceremoniously separated from her role, and there's been some discussion that perhaps it had to do with the fact that she had let her hair go gray. She'd stopped dyeing her hair during the pandemic. The first thing I saw, I think, was a coverage about how Wendy's, the fast food chain, had changed their iconic logo from being, you know, little Wendy with her red pigtails to having gray hair. And they were tweeting out in support of her saying that, you know, you're a star no matter what your hair color is. I just wanted to say thank you, Wendy's, for coming to the defense of women and their gray hair. I think it's important that we acknowledge the brands that are kind of getting in front of this. So I was really happy to see that from Wendy's. I've always liked the fact that you can get a baked potato there instead of fries. I also saw the coverage that Dove had, Dove Soap, you know, had released a hashtag saying, I think it was called Keep the Gray, something like that. And that was also in support of her. So those are the first pieces of news I had heard about her. So I kind of came to the party late and I, then I had to learn who Lisa Laflamme was. I had to read about her 35 or 30 plus year career in journalism in Canada and I read about awards that she had won even recently and I looked at some of her coverage. I saw some of the coverage she had done of the Queen's Jubilee. I found myself charmed by her and happy to see another silver sister out there doing it. I'm also trying, this is Kosas too. This is something that they are calling their air brow. This is a tinted pomade and this is in the color taupe. I've been kind of giving this little brow set a try and so far really liking it. So I wanted to report out on that. I think we're up to speed on this. Lisa Laflamme, if you haven't paid attention to this at all, is in her late 50s and she's had a long career with Canadian television. She had two years left on her career but then was let go, she says, against her wishes. And the door has been left open that she maybe was fired because of her gray hair. And there's been reporting that has suggested that her boss, a uh, vice president named Mike Melling, he's my age, he's, I think, his, it looks like he's in his early 40s. He's been reported to have criticized her hair saying that the color of it was taking on a purple light from the studio lights and that he also asked who granted permission for her to let her hair go gray, which is, we'll unpack that in just a minute. Anyway, so that's been reported through anonymous sources. There have been other journalists who have criticized that reporting saying that that's not strong enough and it's not enough evidence to suggest this is behind it which whatever, I wasn't there, I didn't hear this myself, I don't know if it happened, it's reported to have happened, and Canadian television has asked Mike Melling to stay home for a little while. He's on a leave while they investigate. So that is in the mix, and then his boss has stepped out and said that he has investigated the situation and is personally satisfied that 
her firing was not because of her choice to go gray. And I think, or I don't know how we're supposed to take that, if that's supposed to be case closed or if that's just a, a good PR statement suggesting that he's not admitting to anything. And these things are very delicate and tricky and of course I wasn't there for any of it. All I can say as someone who is kind of reading the news from the US and watching this unfold, there's a whole bunch of coverage of this story. There does seem to be kind of a widespread understanding that it's likely she's been a victim of ageism and sexism in the workplace. For my eyes, I'm going to use Natasha Denona's Mini Nude Palette. This is five shades. I love these minis. You get Natasha Denona's formulas. These are usually under $30, $30 American. This is like $27, I think, right now. So I'm gonna do a little eye look with, with this. One additional thing I should say is that Lisa Laflemme's position is going to be filled again by a, a young man put a picture and his name on there. So her position, you know, there's been some reporting from other people saying that the reason why she's been let go is because of the diminishing advertising revenue that comes to broadcast media and that there's just generally less money to go around. And so that was why, but I can also see that they've not eliminated her position, but they've given it to a younger man who is, of course, I think, very handsome. This has been interesting to watch and honestly, kind of like a bummer. It's a pretty serious bummer. This this whole like circus has made me feel pretty sad. If you're new to my channel, I have a whole playlist about my gray hair transition. I'm a human whose hair went gray young. I've been dyeing my hair since I was 25. I have, um, I'm just one of those people who was really gray, really young, and I spent 15 years hiding that fact. And one of my main reasons at that time was because I felt like I didn't have a place in my professional life. I've worked in the investment real estate space, which is a very conservative space and very male driven. And I just didn't feel like there was capacity for me to let my hair go gray. It wasn't really until the pandemic hit that I went ahead with it. I'd already made up my mind to do it before the pandemic hit, but then the pandemic gave me quite a lot of coverage and also like company. There were a lot of other people in the same boat, including Lisa Laflamme. I felt an immediate allegiance with her in this story because you know, we kind of decided to make the same choice at the same time and we were both in these professional roles where there were, in a lot of ways, you know, men calling the shots. There was a lot for me to relate to in her story and it bummed me out that she was dismissed. It's also bummed me out that I have seen some reporting from one guy in particular who's like a young man saying that there's no evidence whatsoever that this is what's been going on for her without acknowledging the fact that women do experience discrimination in the workplace, especially as we get older. And letting your hair go gray is like a symbolic, it's like symbolic evidence that you are older and that you are acknowledging it and not hiding it and not pretending to be younger. And there's something about that that's rebellious. And I think that I have on my channel celebrated the freedom and the power that comes from letting your natural hair show, both texture, color, all of it. And it's kind of a bummer to see the backlash and it's a reminder that this really is a rebellion. This really is a type of revolution and anytime you do push against those norms, if you acknowledge those norms and then you say that I myself, I don't want to play into that, I want to push against it, sometimes there's a consequence for that. And I think that that's what I got out of the Lisa Laflamme story is that here's a celebrated, well-loved, well-recognized you know, professional woman who for Canadians is a super recognizable personality that she can just be sort of shuffled off set unceremoniously and prior to her contract expiring, probably probably because she's exhibiting some form of mature womanhood. And man, it bummed me out. It really did. It made me feel like, is it wrong to be here on my channel celebrating and encouraging other women to do this when there really might be very real professional consequences? Real professional consequences. Like, is my role here on this channel 
telling people that it's a good idea to go ahead and that good things await you when you do. Is there like blood on my hands if someone's experiencing kind of professional backlash because of it? I don't know. And also it made me think about like, what, what about me? Am I, am I setting myself up for some sort of future professional loss because I myself, you know, have decided to do this and I'm in my early 40s. So I'm already, like in the US, if you're over 40, I think it's a, I think you're a protected class at this point. I believe that's true. You're already kind of considered to be um, at risk of age discrimination over 40, which I am. But I'm also not quite at Lisa LaFlemme's stage in her career. She was nearing 60, right? So I still have quite a lot of years left, I think, to work in the professional space, you know, I'm wondering, like, am I being self-destructive by doing this? Is it, is it a safer choice for me to continue dyeing my hair? And I think I know that the truth is that, yes, of course it's a safer choice to continue dyeing my hair, but I don't want to anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to spend the money. I don't want to spend the time. I don't want to put those chemicals on my hair in the same way. I don't want my scalp to absorb the chemical bath that comes from that. There's a lot of reasons why I don't want to do this anymore. And this is just my natural hair. I'm just letting my hair grow out of my scalp the way it does naturally, which is what most men do. I know there are men out there who do dye their hair, but it's not as common as men who just let their hair grow out of their scalp and then, you know, get a haircut. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just letting my hair grow and then I'm caring for it. So I feel like on some level, you know, it's only fair that I should be allowed to do that. I shouldn't have to go through these other sort of expensive, time consuming and like health harming steps just to be able to go to work. So I think that, I believe that in my heart, I think that I'm right, but I'm also not totally in control. There was also something, you know, that hit me a certain way, reading that the man who was apparently, reportedly, the most vocal against Lisa LaFlemme's gray hair is about my age. And that kind of bummed me out, because I think, you know, when I was growing up, and you think about who might be out there, you know, getting in the way of your career success, I think for me when I was younger, I always envisioned like old guys, you know? And the reality is that Guys my age are, you know, just as likely to hold some of these same prejudices against mature women. And maybe even more likely, if they're younger, they might even have less experience respecting and, you know, valuing a 58-year-old woman's contribution. Maybe a guy who's in his early 40s doesn't really have that setting enabled in his mind and heart yet to understand that. A guy like that in that age group might just be programmed to value a certain thing from women and not necessarily see someone like Lisa's experience and professionalism and value that. There's also the market realities. So if part of the reason why she was uh, released from her contract is because she wasn't resonating with their core audience anymore and they thought a handsome young man might reach their audience better, there might also be, you know, market truth to that as well. If this gentleman who was at a senior level at Canadian television felt this way about her hair, it's likely that a lot of people who watch Canadian television felt that same way too. I'm very curious to hear from the folks out there who are Canadian. I really want to hear your point of view. There's a couple of you I know are from Canada and who are often um, frequent and very generous commenters on my channel. I really want to hear from you. I really want to hear your point of view because this hits closer to home for you than it does for me. Again, I'm just like getting to know some of these characters here in this story. It's been such an interesting story. I even saw reporting from a, like a female reporter in Canada saying that, that this is not, you know, the whole story isn't about the gray hair, that there's been evidence that Lisa LaFlamme and another woman on the show helped to create some kind of like mean girl atmosphere and that there was some kind of like you know, toxic work environment, a la the Ellen DeGeneres shows. If you followed that during the pandemic, there was a lot of reporting about the work environment on the Ellen DeGeneres show. It surprised a lot of people. And so there, I saw one article where someone was saying there was a similar condition at Canadian television created by Lisa LaFlamme and her boss. And of course, I don't know anything about any of this. I'm just telling you I'm reading all of these articles. And if that's true, 
If that's true, I just wanted to say one thing about that. In my experience at work, and this is just my personal experience, in my experience, mean girls usually get ahead. <laughs> kind of sucks, but it's what I've noticed. Mean girls do tend to, you know, be rewarded. I've rarely seen mean girls. This is one here. I've run across a lot of mean girls in my career, and they usually seem to get ahead. And it takes something like some kind of massive upset, like the Ellen would happen at the Ellen DeGeneres show, to um, to unseat them. So if there hasn't been that kind of upset with Lisa Laflamme and this other boss, I have a feeling. I just doubt that that would be the reason why, if it wasn't embarrassing Canadian television, it wasn't becoming a problem for them to manage, I have a hard time believing that the people in charge would elect to disrupt you know, the newsroom because some people feel like it's a toxic environment. I'm speculating. I don't know anything about this. I'm just saying that didn't really ring true for me as the reason why she was let go. I don't know. I'm just basing this on my own experience. Rarely is that a reason for someone to lose their job in my experience. Ageism and sexism though, that just seems to be a little more obvious. And part of it also that's interesting, I was thinking about my own experience in my work life with women in high positions of power who've let their hair go gray and what, what my experience with that is. And I was really searching for it. I know in my current work, I can name several women who are in that category, women who are high um, in high positions and have gray hair. I'm currently working in, in the public sector and I am also working in a big city that has some different standards from other standards in the United States. So I think it's an unusual circumstance. If I back out of my current role and put myself back into previous roles where I've been in investment real estate in a like, classic environment, you know, white male dominated business space, and I think about older women that I could remember, and it narrowed down to really, I think, two women I can remember who were somewhat older. Both of those women dyed their hair for sure. And I think that's not surprising because I think that's been kind of the norm for a long time. So I didn't have any examples of that. I bring this up because some of the articles have suggested that the gray hair isn't the reason why Lisa lost her job. And of course that could very well be true. I don't know, I don't know. But it seems like it had something to do with it. And I think one of the reasons why it seems like that is because we don't have a lot of examples of high powered women of a certain age who have stopped dyeing their hair and have had gray hair and then have been removed from their positions. If there are other examples, I'd like to know what they are because I've been looking for them. So I think the issue with this and the reason why I think this story has taken on so much interest is that I think Lisa Laflamme is providing you know, an archetype for us to talk about and the particularities of what exactly happened in her specific workplace, what she did or didn't do, what the reasons were or weren't are sort of less interesting and now we're talking about it more in a symbolic space. What are the rights of mature women in the workplace? Do we need to come to their defense a la Dove and Wendy's? Is this something that we need to have more oomph behind the backlash. It's looking like we're kind of getting into that space. And I think what's happening here is that I think maybe the, the young men who were making these decisions with Lisa's career, I think we're probably largely unaware of some of the growing movement that's happening around gray hair. It's really changed tone in the last couple of years. I have noticed more representation with gray hair models kind of everywhere I look. Like at Target, I saw a very large photo of a mature model modeling a bra and she had long gray hair. That was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. She's beautiful. It was a really great ad. So that was brand new for me. I think I saw that about a year ago. And then even recently, I'm a big Dita Von Teese fan, if you're familiar with her. I've seen her a couple times live. I have her coffee table book. Even recently on her Instagram feed, she posted a picture of herself in some of her undergarments. She has an undergarment line. It's really beautiful. 
she posted a picture of herself wearing a gray wig, which I hadn't seen before. Dita Montes is known for her dark brown hair, but she's naturally a blonde, so she will play with color from time to time. I've seen her in different colored wigs, but I don't think I'd ever seen her in a silver wig. So, you know, I'm seeing more examples of gray hair in these spaces, so I think there was sort of a misreading of the room by Canadian television about the current status. I just don't think those guys understood that the ship is turning around and that there might actually be a backlash. I think they were surprised by that. Maybe in previous years they would have been able to let her go and people would have said, oh yeah, you know, you can't can't be on TV as an anchor woman with gray hair. Nobody does that. This is Cicely's Fido Cole star in the color number two. This is a really nice eyeliner. It's smudgeable. It's waterproof. I really like it. This color is really pretty, this dark brown. This is a an old favorite of mine. This is Bobbi Brown's Smoky Eye Mascara. It's one of my favorite mascaras. I'm opening a brand new tube of this for the first time right here on the channel. So. Okay, so here we are. We've got a bunch of people weighing in, talking about it. We've got corporate giants coming to Miss LaFlemme's defense. You know, they're all basically taking a minute to breathe through this. What can we expect next? Well, I think that it would be reasonable to expect that there is some sort of acknowledgement that whether or not this is the reason Lisa LaFlemme lost her position. Oh, I'm using, this is a new powder by Kosas. It's their cloud set and I'm using the color feathery this is pressed powder it's really nice just using a little brush here the Ilia super serum skin tint can be on me very very dewy so I'm just taking it down a little bit what I want to see here is some acknowledgement that Lisa Laflamme was poorly treated I think a lot of people have said that I think Katie Couric was really vocal in saying that it was handled terribly so I do think that that's, um, that's out there, but I would like to see Canadian television acknowledge that this has been handled poorly. And I would like this conversation to continue to talk about the presence of mature women in both the media and throughout life in general. Where are the spaces where we do not see mature women providing their skills, professionalism, wisdom, all of those pieces. I think there are plenty of spaces we can name that could benefit from grown women in that space. That's just my opinion. On my cheeks, I'm going to use a new Pat McGrath blush for me. This is Paradise Glow. It winds up having kind of a warm nude effect on me. What I would really like to see is this conversation continue and not just get swept under the rug. I would like to see what's happened to Lisa Laflamme turn into a sort of acknowledgement that this is not okay. It's not okay just to discard women when we get to a certain age. And it's not okay for men in their early 40s to have to provide permission for mature women to stop dyeing their hair. I think we need to acknowledge that that's egregiously wrong. It's wrong for anyone's hair to be policed in that way. A person's natural hair color or texture should not be illegal in any setting. So I think that this is something that we need to all get straight on right away, especially in the workplace. I think there's been some decent progress made in terms of hair texture being understood to be something that should not be policed in the workplace. I don't think we're there yet, but I think that that has come some way. And I think that the same needs to be true for gray hair in women. I don't think that men experience the same degree of discrimination for having gray hair as women do. And I think we need to acknowledge the fact that this is something that is really serious. You know, I, on my channel, I've had a lot of fun connecting with women and talking about, you know, the power that comes from this choice. And we've talked about on my channel, you know, what happens when someone says something mean to you at a party, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that this choice does come with some real economic risks. On my lips, I'm gonna be using a Rare Beauty lip set. This is relatively new to the market, not super new, but I'm using a lip pencil by Rare Beauty. This is in the color Creative. And then I'll be using the matching lipstick as well. As I've been watching this unfold, I think I'm feeling a little bit better about 
it now, but like earlier in the week, I was feeling really, really bad about this situation with Lisa LaFlam. I was feeling really bad about it and it made me feel insecure for the first time. As you know, I've been pretty, you know, happy about my choice. This is the Rare Beauty lipstick also in the color Creative. You uh, pop it out like that. It's cute. I think I'm gonna leave the makeup look right here. So I'm really happy with this. I also love these Natasha Denona mini. Can't recommend them enough. This is again that mini nude palette. If you're curious about her formula, these little minis are great and they travel beautifully. I just love them. Maybe I'll finish with a little bit of gloss. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, maybe just a little. I'm gonna use Fenty Beauty's Original Gloss Balm and Fenty Glow. Yeah, I always feel a little bit better in a gloss, personally. You guys, I want to hear from you. I don't have any big conclusions to draw about the Lisa Laflemme situation. Other than that, it bummed me out and reminded me that whenever you do have some sort of like gray hair revolution or anything like that, there can always be backlash. And just because you want people to see you a certain way because that's now how you see yourself, it doesn't mean that you get to control how others will see you and that there are some kind of old ways of thinking still at play and that those old ways of thinking can be present in your workplace and they can cause economic harm to you. I think that the best thing we can do is to keep talking about this and to not let this particular circumstance go on used you know how can we use this to make sure that other women with lower profile roles who may be experiencing the same kind of discrimination how do we speak up for them how do we make it known that it's not okay to discriminate against people for this reason or for any of the other reasons we've agreed that are not acceptable one thing we can do is talk about it which is why i wanted to do that here today on my channel where I have been one of the people out here giving voice to the joys and benefits of ditching the dye. I think it's good for this community to reinforce itself and I think it's really good to speak out in support of mature women. I wanted to just say one more time, thanks to Wendy's and Dove for being Johnny on the spot in this way. I love to see that from more brands. I know that it can be risky for brands to jump on these types of things without having all of the information out there, but I really do appreciate that level of support coming from those two brands. I think that's super cool. I really wanna hear your thoughts below, especially Canadians out there who are more familiar with Lisa Laflamme and Canadian television than I am. I definitely wanna hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed seeing me try out some new makeup in a little bit of a pre-autumn way, and I hope you enjoyed hearing my somewhat melancholy, somewhat, you know, still forming thoughts about this particular circumstance and what it means for me and for the other Silver Sisters out there. Please sound off in the comments down below. You know I love to hear from you. I hope you're all doing well out there and I hope you have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.